So, page 8, our first question asks us, how do you explain the different shapes of the light spots? Would somebody like Please don't. This is just so they can hear what's going on. So, Race, what did you say? Um, I put the shape of the 90 degree angle spot as a circle because of the shape of the flashlight. And then at the 15 degree, it is an oval because it is stretched out from indirect light. Okay, so it's stretched out. You use the term indirect light. I don't know if I agree with that phrase. Give me a vocab word. Beam spreading. Beam spreading. So because of the angle that we give it, it spreads out the beam. Okay, number two, when is the area of the spot the largest? Yes, sir? Uh, at the 15 degree angle. Yep, at the 15 degree angle. And which spot delivers the greatest amount of energy to the floor? Avery? Okay, why? Because the top has the strongest light concentration. It's the top, so it has the strongest light cover. Uh, concentration. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, tell me in terms of that graph, which graph would we be looking at? One or two? One? Yeah, so the greatest amount of energy. Did anybody say they're equal? Okay, and there's a way to interpret that question. That yes, that would be correct. So if you're considering the amount of light coming out of the flashlight, you know, they're the same, whether you have it at a 90 degree angle or a 15 degree angle. And some people did interpret the question that if you're, if you run into this question on like a test or a response sheet, make sure you fully explain why you interpreted it like that. Good question. Okay. Number four, if you put a penny in each light spot, explain which one will receive the most energy. Sir. It would receive more energy in the 90 degree one. Yep, that absolutely would. Why? Because there's more light concentration in that area. Yep, very good. Number five, if you used a heat lamp instead of a flashlight, which penny would get the hottest? Explain why. Zach? Uh, the penny has a 90 degree because it's still going to have more light concentration. Absolutely. Okay. Um. And number six, what influence does solar angle have on the heating of Earth? Go ahead. The more direct the light is on a planet, the hotter the planet gets. The more direct the light is. Yeah, so we have a high light concentration, right? Um, and it's got to be at like a high solar angle, right? So we hit that peak of that graph, correct? Okay, great. All right, any questions on that one? Yes, sir. I put where the sun is facing, we get more light, but then I also added for more concentration. Mm -hmm. And so the thing that affects concentration, and then in turn affects heat, is going to be your what? The solar angle. The solar angle. So if we have a high solar angle, it's going to be a higher concentration of light. It's going to get hotter. Think back to our question yesterday, why does it get hot? Why is summer hotter? This is a piece of it. Okay, If our Earth is positioned to have a high solar angle, then it gets more direct sunlight. That sunlight is more concentrated. There's less beam spreading. All right? So I'm going to show you an example of this. Real quick, I'm going to flip this around so they can check out those graphs. See if I can get that positioned. Not being so quiet, thanks. Okay, this next part's gonna be a little tricky. Can you stop it for a second? Central America, South America. I have it centered on the equator. What's the, what's the shape of the circle? What's the shape you see on the globe? Circle. Circle. Okay, now watch. Hold it still. You keep. Okay, race. You keep your eye on the rectangle. This is tricky. Double rectangle. Okay. Now tell me what's happening in the northern hemisphere. What shape do you see? No, no. Race, just hold it still. I'm trying. Race, that didn't help. Is this still a circle? It looks ovalish. Oval. It is ovalish, yeah. Try down here. What do you see now? Race? Keep your eye on that. <laughs> it's 
Stretch, stretch, stretch out, use vocab words. It's spreading. How about over here? What do you see on the side of the globe? Come on, move so you can see it if you can't. I'll go on the other side. It's, it's, oh. it's a beam spreading. Beam spreading. And then how about this side on the other side of the globe? Do you see beam spreading? Okay, now let's give Race a chance to, who wants to take a crack at holding this? All right, Avery, get up here. Okay. Okay, Race, now you need to see what happened. Because you were watching the square. Okay, back it up a little. There you go. Center it and hold it very still. Okay, so do you see the circle in the middle? Yeah. And if I bring it down, what's it doing? And if I move it this way, what's it doing? And over here? And over here? Okay, thank you, Avery. And then I'm going to stop it. Okay, I don't know how well this is going to work, but let's take a look at this Earth viewed as many flat surfaces diagram. Okay, so consider our globe, okay, and then consider many, many flat surfaces around the globe, okay? So you can see these are like angled there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we take a look at angles of rays coming in, okay, so we've got solar angles going on, okay? And look at this surface. Consider this surface to be like um, the flat part of a projector. Is that right? It's not a projector. The flat part of a, help me out. A protractor. Thank you. Okay, so the flat part of a protractor. And our angle of the beam is where one is. So what's the angle? No, this no, will be 90, zero. 90. 90 degrees. Okay, so this is coming in. So this is a high solar angle, correct? Okay, so we got a high solar angle. Um, what's happening with light concentration? Intense is high. So that would be like the equator with the sun directly pointing at it, right? All right. Well, then if we have the second angle here at number two, remember this is your uh, protractor. And we're measuring from here to here, this angle, all right? And so this beam is coming in here. What do you think that angle is? 60, any other guesses? Uh, 60, 70. Okay, sounds pretty accurate. Um, talk to me in terms of beam spreading. Okay, so beam spreading is increasing as we decrease the angle, okay? Uh, check out number three. What do you think that is from here to here? 45, 50, somewhere in there. That sounds pretty good. All right. How about light concentration here? Not as high. Okay. And how about number four? 30. Okay. So 15, between 15 and 30. All right. What's our light concentration? Not as high. Okay. Not a very high concentration. What about beam spreading? Beam spreading is high. Okay, um, our angle is low, and so our light concentration is not very high. All right, uh, let me show you one other thing. So these are the shapes that you might have seen when we did the projector on the globe. So in the center here, you can see it's a tiny circle, little beam spreading, right? And then as we move away from the center, we get more beam spreading. Why? Okay. Yes. Okay, so the angle of the surface to the light. Okay. And we're talking solar angle, right? So our solar angle has changed. It's no longer a direct hit. It's not a 90 degree solar angle. Um, it becomes a lower solar angle as it like goes around our globe. Okay, so what does this have to do with it being hotter in the summer? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Landon, what do you think? It's higher concentration in the summer. Can you tell me why? 
okay, because the angle can increase, okay, um, the most being at 90 degrees. So now let's take a look at why our Earth revolving around the sun and the tilt creates these different solar angles, shall we? Okay, so we're going to push this table in, we're going to turn that light on, and we're going to form a circle all the way around, and we're going to walk. Anyone want to hold the computer? <laughs> well, it's just fine. Flip on the light. No, no, um, that light. <laughs> okay, I need a circle around here. So what's the tilt of the Earth? 23 and a half degrees and pointed towards what? The North, North, star. North star. Okay, focus on where the sunlight is shining the most intensely or the highest solar angle. So where do we have the, the least amount of beam spreading? Which part of the earth? You guys come over there. You guys move. The yep, north. Move this way so you can see. Northwestern. Where's the most intense sunlight? Southern. West. Right here. Not even on the equator. It's southern hemisphere. Okay. So southern hemisphere gets the most intense. What's the temperature like here? You think? It'd be like hot. Hot. Okay. Ish. It depends where you are and on your um, physical features. Okay. So it's gonna be hot down here. So season for this place. Summer. And for us. Winter. Here, here we are. This is the dead of winter. What day specifically do you know? December 10th. No, that's when we're closest. Put that day out of your mind because we know that has nothing to do with seasons. Okay? December 21st? Sure. What day is that? Winter solstice. Winter solstice. This is the day in our Earth's revolution when the sun's most intense rays hit the Tropic of Capricorn, which happens to be what degree latitude south? Three and a half degrees. Isn't that cool? 23 and a half degrees. Okay. And so in our revolution, it hits this point and it's the most intense right there. That means all the other places experience beam spreading, especially up here, which means the light is less intense. We get less intense sunlight up here. Okay. We're going to walk this way a smidge. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep the earth tilted at a 23 and a half degree angle. Okay. And so we're here in a rotation. Where is the most intense sunlight now? You guys can't see. Get over there. Where is it? It's on the equator. Yep. Our most intense sunlight is on the equator. All right. And I'm trying to keep it like solar plane, like right there, okay? And, well, maintaining my, and then, okay, we're spinning <laughs> day and night. What day is this? Do you know? Special day. Summer solstice. Nope. Christmas. No. <laughs> December 21st is over here. We've gone a fourth of the way through our rotation. What season is next? Spring. spring. So we go from winter to spring, okay? And the most intense rays are on the equator. And so it is what? This is called the spring equinox, or the vernal equinox. Special day. Equinox sounds similar to equator, which sounds similar to equal. Okay, which sounds you know equal. So let's talk in terms of solar um, light concentration. Okay, which can then translate into heat concentration. So what's our light concentration from the northern hemisphere compared to the southern hemisphere? More or less, less, more, equal. Yeah. So the solar, um, the beam spreading up here and down here is an equal amount. It's also the day when we have an equal amount of sunlight. 12 hours in the northern hemisphere, 12 hours in the southern hemisphere. Moving right around. I get my arms a break. And I'll place it here. Where are we at here? Come this way, a smidge. 
you got to be able to see where this light is hitting. So if you guys need to keep moving this way. All right. So what season are we in? We're in summer because we went winter, spring, summer. Okay. Um, where is the most intense sunlight hitting? No, prime meridian is longitude. If you're thinking in terms of latitude, if it was the opposite there, Capricorn, the one in the northern hemisphere is cancer. cancer. Okay, so the tropic of cancer. And what degree latitude north is that? 23.5. Yes, coincidence? I think, I think not. Totally not a coincidence that it is 23.5 degrees and the earth is tilted at 23.5 degrees. Okay. So our most intense rays are in the northern hemisphere, okay? Um, beam spreading is minimal in the northern hemisphere. What about the southern hemisphere? Is it low beam spreading or high beam spreading? Let's go to the solar angle. Solar angle in the northern hemisphere is direct or is low? direct so it will be 90 degrees okay now for the southern hemisphere what's our angle that this light is coming in at it's lower do you see that do you see how we have some here mm -hmm. so if it's a lower degree look at our graphs if it's a low, lower degree solar angle what's our beam spreading high. high beam spreading which means there's less intense light down here so we're in winter here well, we're in summer here. What day is it? August 20th. Summer. I know you think the hottest day of the year, but that's not quite right. Because our heat, like, catches up to us. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It's not the hottest day of the year. It is the day when we have the longest amount of sunlight and the most intense rays on the Tropic of Cancer. So what's this day called? If that was the winter, equal, uh, the winter solstice, this is the... Uh, here's the summer solstice date six months from December 21st, June 21st. Get that 10th date out of your mind. That date doesn't count anymore. That was just to prove that the earth, its seasons are not related to being closer to the sun. Make sense? Okay. We've disproven that. It is not because we're closer to the sun. It has everything to do with these solar angles. Okay. So where was I? Oh, the date. Summer solstice is when? June 21st. Okay, yeah. So we have June 21st. Um, summer. What's the next season we're heading into? Fall. All right, so we're moving. Yep, stay here so that you can see. Make your way around. Scoot this way a smidge. Okay, you're good. Stay right there. Okay. So, most intense rays are where on the globe? Yep, they're on the equator. Means equal. Equal what? Equal, equal amount of sunlight. sunlight. Equal amount of sunlight. And then where? Northern and southern hemisphere. hemisphere. Okay, equal amounts of daylight as well. How about beam spreading? Equal. And then sun concentration? Equal. Equal. Okay, I want to take you from summer, okay, into fall. So here we are in summer where the most intense rays are in the northern hemisphere. Now here's the deal. The northern hemisphere loses some of that light intensity while the southern hemisphere gains it. And here it equalizes. So it's in the favor of the north here. And then it's, uh, it's almost like the angle slides down. And now the most intense rays are on the equator instead of the Tropic of Capricorn. So it comes down here. So the south gets more um, solar intensity. Okay, the north gets less. The south gets less beam spreading. The north starts to get more beam spreading. Okay, um, until we rotate into winter again. All right. In the fall, at this point, it's a fall or autumnal equinox. Take a guess on the date. Uh, 
September 21st-ish. Yep, it changes because of leap years, okay? So our revolution is 365 days and a quarter, right? Okay, so here we've got that. Now, then we're back over here to December 21st for winter. If you think about the months, how many months in a year? Okay, there's four seasons, so divided by four. Three months, okay? There are three months between the equinoxes and solstices. So we start with December 21st. Okay, and then we go three months. So December, January, February, March. March 21st is the spring equinox. Okay, then we go March, April, May, June. Okay, June 21st, that's the summer solstice. And then back to autumn, September, right? June, July, August, September. Ah, eh? pretty sweet? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we've covered that, uh, you're out of class practice and you'll have time to start it. Smidge. Page nine. You'll write on the back side because there's no room to write on the front. And no, you don't have to fill all the lines. But you have to answer for each of the subjects. Okay? Ready, go. Thank you. Yep.